visual design. To developers it's like garlic to vampires, but a common misconception is that you need some artistic ability to do design. And while we can talk for hours about some beautiful design from the past century, we're not going to do that. Instead, in this video I'm going to give you actual advice so you can improve your design game today. And each and every one of us has great taste and can recognize great design. The only downside right now is you don't have the required vocabulary to speak about design in an intelligent way. But as long as you have great taste and you're willing to practice, you can achieve great looking design. And design by itself isn't art, but it's utilitarian, which means it's meant to be useful rather than beautiful or ornamental. And this is why design has so much more in common with development than you think, because the purpose of design is to solve problems in an aesthetically pleasing way. A lot of design is based on Gestalt principles from German psychology. So let's look at them. The first one is contrast, which draws attention. The second principle is repetition, which creates consistency in your design. The third principle is alignment, which is used to organize information, creating order. And the last principle is proximity, which groups related things together into one visual unit. So remember this mnemonic. Design is crap. Contrast, repetition, alignment and proximity. So the next time you work on a design, ask yourself, does your design meet crap standards? So let's talk about contrast. Here we have some content that we need to establish the visual hierarchy of. So ask yourself, what is the most important piece of content here? Well, first is the title, then is the content, and then lastly is the time posted. And not only can we emphasize the important content, we can de-emphasize one that isn't. And how can we do that? Well, we can do that by using size, weight, and color, among other things. So here we're going to increase the size and the weight of the title, making it a lot easier to read and comprehend in this visual hierarchy. Next, let's de-emphasize the time posted, and then we're going to increase the line height for the content to make it easier to read. And just by asking some simple questions, we can achieve great looking design. One of the most common mistakes has to do with text contrast. So how does the emphasizing text work? Here we have a simple white text on a dark background. And while it's true that we can reduce the opacity of the text, as you can see, this quickly breaks apart once we change the background color. So how can we fix that? Well, first we're going to select the same background color and then we're going to play with the color value until we achieve the contrast that we want. And in this case, using a color space like HSL, which stands for Hue Saturation Lightness, is way superior than using hex colors because it's way easier to reason about colors. Because as you can see, we just had to pick the same hue and adjust the lightness. So don't rely on opacity for the emphasizing text, but use actual colors. Next, let's talk about repetition. A repetition is something that you're already familiar with. Most of us today work with components, so we have consistent font, styling, colors, and etc. So we don't have to really concern ourselves with repetition. And repetition can be anything from styling or using some familiar design elements or sections and etc. But let me give you some food for thought here. Maybe you've seen something like this, where you have a section with more content, which takes the entire width and height of the page. And then you have some scrolling indicator in case the user doesn't notice that there's more content. This is okay, but we can actually use design to make this a lot more interesting. So if you look at the logo at the top left, we can see it has an interesting design element. So now we can maybe take that element and entice our user to scroll further. Not only did we take an interesting design element, now there's a clear vertical alignment for our eye to lock onto. And of course, you don't have to be this creative, but I actually think that this is something really cool that you can do. And speaking of alignment, here's how you can use alignment to improve your design. So here I have a design that you're going to examine. Can you notice what are the problems here that we can use design to solve? Well, first, the text is very long and hard to read. Usually you can get away with centering text if it's short, but not for longer text because it becomes really unreadable. But before you make any changes to our design, I have a trick that I use. And this is what every design uses, and it's a grid. You can enable the grid in the design tool of your choice. Here I am inclined to align the text to the left, but actually let's first rein the text in so it's a lot more readable, our title and our subtitle, so we can see how we feel about it after the fact. 
And as we can see, it looks pretty good. So there is not a reason to align it to the left in this case. But when we look at the cards at the bottom, they are very hard to read and the center alignment doesn't work. So in this case, we're going to align them to the left. And our design looks a lot better. So what makes this design appealing more than the one from before? Well, for one, we have a strong horizontal line with the baseline here where we have our logo and our navigation. As I said in design, nothing is unintentional. Unintentional design is what we call bad design. And besides having a strong horizontal line, we also have a strong vertical line. This makes it easy to read the content of the page for our eyes. And not only that, but if you can notice how we center the text, we also have a strong vertical line in the middle. And we can also have a call for action or something else that we want here. But what also makes great design, as we learned previously, is consistency. And in this case, all the spacing in this design is consistent. So I'm using the same spacing for the top, from the navigation, and from the spacing in the cars. Of course, not all of your spacing has to be the same, but it has to be consistent. And this is the secret of great design. The great thing about design is that once you learn the design fundamentals, you can break the rules. Let's look at Stripe as an example how they break the rules. Remember how I told you about the grid? Well, in this case, Stripe also uses a grid, and we can see it like this. So it has a strong horizontal line, and it has a strong vertical line. But as you can see, an intentional decision was made here by the designer of the site to overflow this image here. But the reason it looks great is because it's intentional. And how do we know that it's intentional? Well, because everything else on the site is on a grid, it's aligned, it's consistent, and it follows all of the design principles. Another example of this that you might have seen in the wild is when you're reading a post and then you have some image that breaks out of the layout. This creates more interest. And breaking the rules of design is what makes great design. Next, let's talk about proximity. Proximity is grouping related things together. In this example, we might be tempted to space these items evenly like this, but this creates a problem for our brain because now we read each of them separately. Instead of spacing the items evenly, ask yourself what items belong together. In this case, we can use proximity to bring the title and time posted together. By using proximity and grouping related things together, we create one visual unit. Next, let's talk about typography. And there are three font families that you should know about, but don't call them fonts in front of designers, please. So the first font that you're probably familiar with is serif, and it's really noticeable by these decorations. And fonts are really powerful because they invoke emotion. For example, serif fonts invoke the image of luxury but they can also look rustic and remind you of newspapers and books. So the other one is sans serif font, which just means that it doesn't have those decorations. And if you want your designs to look beautiful, just stick to sans serif fonts. And of course, there are monospaced fonts where every character has the same width. So here are some of my favorite sans serif fonts. If you want a serious font, then stick to Inter or Monroe, but if you want something more playful, then pick Montserrat or Poppins. So here we're going to look at what to use as a grid in your design. And you can easily enable an endpoint grid in Figma, you can change the nudge value to 8 pixels. And an endpoint grid just means multiples of 8. Designers love all sorts of crazy things like using Fibonacci sequence, and some divine math ratio for things, but keep things simple. Use an endpoint grid, so 8 pixels, 16 pixels, 24 pixels, 32 pixels, 64 pixels, and so on. You can use this as a scale for your typography and everything else, including spacing. So the next tip I have for you is to skip weights. If you look at the left, then if you just increment by 100 each weight, there doesn't seem to be much of a difference. So instead, when you're picking weights, skip a weight. So instead of using 400, 500, and 600, use 400, 600, and 800 instead. And let's talk about text contrast. Avoid using absolute values like black and white, because this is really straining for the eye. In this case, here we have a pure black background with a pure white text. So let's use a more grayish background and let's also de-emphasize the text. 
and this looks a lot better. But you can also use different tricks. You can add some color to this text in the background to make it feel warmer or cooler. And this, in my opinion, already looks a lot better. Colors don't have to be complicated. You probably used one of these sites before where you get these random colors, but the problem with this is that it's like shuffling a random deck of cards and you have no idea what to do with these colors. But picking a color is very simple. First open a color wheel and the first thing you're going to do is just pick a color you like, which can be anything. I'm going to pick this blue. This is our primary color. Next, we're going to pick the complementary color, which we can use as a highlight color. And to do that is simple as picking the color opposite from the primary color on the color wheel, which is this yellow color. Now in this design, we can add our colors. But we can use a simple trick from interior design using the 60, 30, 10 rule. So 60 is 60% 60 of the entire content, which is going to be our background. If you're using white and black, that's already two colors. So for the 30%, we're going to pick the white. And for the 10%, we're going to use our highlight color. And you can also flip these values and interchange them. They don't always have to be in this order. So in our design here, we can apply the background color. And we can apply our highlight color. And this already looks great in my opinion. Next, let's talk about layout. And unfortunately, layout can be taught and has to be practiced. If you want to make unique looking layouts, that is. If you're just doing the regular layouts, then you're fine. But you can also use different sites for inspiration, such as design inspiration, to look at layout designs, which has a lot of beautiful designs you can look at. But let me actually give you another tip with layout design. I know a lot of us are tempted to jump straight into the code, but you're doing yourself a disservice. Before you do that, take a piece of paper or open Figma and then draw some wireframes. So here in this example, this took me 20 seconds maybe, and you can come up with unique designs in this way. So we can just have some basic login here and we can spice it up by, for example, moving it or keeping it in the middle. And then we can maybe add some image as the background and etc., which was really five seconds to sketch out. Or we can try this idea, we can have the form on the left and then we can have some description on the right. And it also took 5 seconds to create this design. So we can maybe have our login centered and then we can maybe split the view like this. And this was really cheap, simple and fast to iterate over these ideas. So before you do any design, sketch it out. Alright, so if you want to learn more about design, here are some book recommendations I have for you. And trust me, they're worth their weight in gold. So the problem with most design books is that they're made for print. But books like Refactor UI and Design for Hackers are really awesome and aimed at the average developer. So Refactor UI was written by Adam Waifen and Steve Sugar, And yes, that's the creator of Tailwind. And this book is really interesting because it was published before Tailwind and you can see how it informed the design decisions behind Tailwind. Next we have Design for Hackers by David Kadavi and this is a really great book that breaks down design for hackers. And the third book I highly encourage you to read is by Josef Müller Brockmann who wrote Grid Systems. So you can learn how grid works and another interesting thing you can do is despite this being an older book you can try recreating the examples with CSS grid. Once you learn how behind every great design is a grid and how it works you're going to be able to break down everything from classic posters from Swiss design to modern web layouts. Alright friends that's it now you know enough visual design to be dangerous. And if you like what you've seen, don't forget to like and subscribe and you can also support me by becoming a patron. Thank you for watching and catch you in the next one. Peace.